It's a good job Sean Lomas has had over a hundred over a hundred MMA fights because there's bet. not much he hasn't seen. Twenty six, eighty five, and one. And people look at the eighty five and go, "Yeah, what a can!" Look at the twenty six and look at some of the names on that record. If you sleep on the road, warrior, he'll put you to sleep. Your job is to go out and finish him. If you include boxing, MMA, Muay Thai, Lathway, kickboxing, definitely over 300. Well, I lost count at 300 like a few years ago, so it could be anything like. <laughs> Today, in one of the most remarkable, unremarkable stories ever, we're joined by Sean Lomas, a man with 85 losses. The question is, how did he get there? I was born in Manchester, but then I was adopted by a family in Disley, so I grew up in Disley. People used to fight at school as well and stuff like that, not because they didn't like each other, just because to see who would win. That's just what we used to do. We were still friends at the end of it. I started doing judo when I was six years old because my dad like, thought judo was like an Olympic sport, so he thought it was better than karate. I was doing that maybe till 11, six years old till 11, but then I wanted to learn to punch and kick. I did karate until I was maybe a t like a teenager. After karate, Muay Thai was the first one that I did, which was like a fight where you have to win by knocking and knocking the other person out. With 82 KO, with 180 centimeter high. His fighting record, 10 win, three losses, Seven KO from Manchester, England. I wasn't making any money from it. I was just doing it for fun. This guy, Paul Street, said, um, "Do you want to do a boxing fight? I'll give you two hundred quid." <laughs> I remember at his old gym, like in Fort Smoking Brown, he'd be there with a cig in, the, um, in his little office and then people would be on the bags and he'd have a cig in his hand and stuff like that. But he was a good boxer though, like he'd be smoking before a fight and then he'd still knock somebody out and then he'd be smoking after it. Like, he said, do you want to fight today? And I, I just got to get to where he was. I never even trained boxing, I only trained Muay Thai. But he said, you've got to be 12 stone. And I got down to 12 stone. He took me down to Circus Tavern. He put me in with this guy, looked about 16 stone, had a Muay Thai stance and then like I got knocked out. But I didn't mind, I got 200 quid and then he said, do you want to do it again tomorrow? I said, yeah. <laughs> do you want to do it again tomorrow? I said, yeah. And I was a chef getting 200 quid a week. I got 600 quid for a week and quit being a chef that day. And then like, um, I just started fighting. Well, back then it was just they called it unlicensed boxing. They always want you to lose. They weigh you, and then they'll find out. They'll think, right, if he's 12 stone, they put you up against somebody that's at least 14 or more. I just treated boxing a bit like sparring that you get paid for, because like I didn't really care if I won or lost. Go down, and get my 200 quid, and then just try my best. And if I knock him out, I knock him out. And if I don't, I'll still fight again tomorrow. Back then, that's how I used to think. But when I first started MMA, I had no MMA training at all. So let us welcome your fighter in the red corner. He is an independent fighter from Sheffield. Please welcome Sean Lomas. I'd had him boxing Friday night and then boxing Saturday night and they said, do you want to do MMA on Sunday? I had to cut like, I think it was 90 to 80 in between those fights. I had a big weighted vest. I did this thing called 10 up, 10 down. And every time you do it, you lose like a kilo. Do one punch, one kick, one knee, one press up, one sit up, one squat. It makes you sweat and you go up to, to, up to two, three, all up to 10 and back down to one. Probably the wrong time to do it. It would have been better to do it a week before the fight. Dangerous position. Lomas needs to walk around this armbar, roll into it. What's your point, Lomas is? But it's on, no, it's on. It was just like another fight because it was the third fight of the of the weekend. So that guy got me in an armbar and I didn't know how to get out of armbars. At the start, I didn't know anything. So I was learning on the job. It felt like being, like being hit by with bricks with rubber on them. But now it just feels normal. I fought twice in one night on the same show before. MMA, yeah. I won the first one, lost the second one. Well, I agreed to do it before I went there. Colin Wilby, I uh, beat him quite easy. And then I was fighting Claudio Enrique, like on the same show, and I ended up losing that 
that one. I'm sure it was a choke. Yeah, before the fight, the, the, you look at this light and then like they, they put the blood pressure thing on you. They put the thing on your finger. They ask you questions, like make sure you've not been knocked out in the last 30 days. Like, so as long as you say no, they'll then they'd let you fight. Have you yeah, ever so, sort of lied about that? Well, yeah, you, you have to, if, like if you want the money, otherwise you're not gonna fight, are you? I don't know, I don't think it's that dangerous. Not that many bad things happened. I don't really take that much damage. I've had like um, a few things like fractured arms and stuff like that, that hurts. Because like if it's boxing, punches don't, they might give you a headache, but it doesn't really cause any bone damage or anything like that. Yeah, it definitely, it definitely does give you brain damage, but like three MMA fights in the world was fine. If Paul Street hadn't got me fighting three times a week and it wouldn't have in my head that that's normal, that's just the way. That you, that you get the most money. Looks like uh, there's a little bit of a size difference between the two fighters. Manawa has a body lock, looking to take down. Go straight into side position, straight into full mount. We did do a fight camp for Jimmy Manuel, but then the Tony Moran fight offered to me That was a war, that was like the, probably the toughest fight that I've ever had. I was just taking the straight right, right to the face just to land my low kick and it was, I was for the low kick, he was hitting me with the straight right, we were just doing it over and over again, like... I beat him on points, it was like a stand-up war, like... And the Mike Lingott fight got offered me during that fight camp. No, I fought him Friday, and then I fought Mike Ling on the Saturday, and then I fought Jimmy Manu on the Sunday. But I was physically too tired from that Tony Moran fight. Then when I first started, that's all it was. When you're 20 to, to 30, it's easy. A submission by way of an armbar. Well, the reason why people want me to fight is because they know that, say if they've got like um, a guy who sold loads of tickets, they, they don't want to just get some guy that's going to go down in the first, they want somebody that will fight to the very end and that ticket seller will fight somebody that looks like he's, he's meant to be there that might even beat him if he, even though he's like a little bit lighter and he's only just been called up that day or that week. People like Jimmy Manuel, they have to beat me to get into UFC. Like, there's a few people that fought me and then the next fight's in UFC, so like, they they probably use me to like, right, you have to beat him and then you can get in. But back then I wasn't managing it in the way that gets you into the big shows. I was just managing it in the way to get the most money in that month. It's like I don't pick my fights. I fight too often. And you don't want somebody that's going to take, another, take a fight the day before or the day after. Well, it depends on how you define the word journeyman because like journeyman today, like just fight like three times a week and but, but they don't like train like six days a week. And I used to train, well, I always have trained even now six days a week as well as fighting. But I am training like him sort of to make myself better all the time. It is different to guys that just just turn up and they've got no chance of winning. If there's not anybody that I thought that there wasn't a chance I could be, and then I just like fighting. Like I look back and I think if you lose, you do learn like what the other guy did, and then you can analyze it and then learn to get better. So it, it makes you a better teacher as well. You know, I've got something to show your students as well. So it does make you a better fighter, but it makes you a better coach. But now as well, because I'm putting on my own shows as well, like the carnage continues. At the moment, it's only small, but like all the, the fights that I put on are like really entertaining. That's another thing I want to make big my my events um, next. Thank you.